as we started doing our own products and chemist confessions, we realized the marketing aspect important. is important. Yeah. You know, it's not to say that, oh, what a waste of time and money, but you know, there is that, it needs that finesse to really bridge the message together. And we'll get into this, I'm sure more later, but we realize now that customers are more and more aware lot smarter than a lot of industries give them credit for and so with that it's been really helping us with both content and products we should also add that you ask how we got that started we didn't really have a clue as to what we were doing this is startup to storefront today's guests are gloria Liu and victoria Fu, co-founders of chemist confessions the skincare brand that started as an attempt to break down the overly complicated and purposefully confusing world of beauty products they were industry insiders working at L'Oreal, and they were fed up with the lack of transparency in how the big brands marketed to consumers. Since they're both actually chemists, hence the name, when they tackled misconceptions and broke down the basics of healthy skincare, people listened. They were able to amass a passionate and loyal fan base before eventually expanding into their own line of skincare products. So listen in as we cover everything from what would happen if you only applied sunscreen to one half of your face consistently over 10 years, the three most basic and essential skincare products, and in accordance with one of their most popular hashtags, we decode that ingredient list. Now, back to the episode. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we have Chemist Confessions. Thanks for coming on. Hi, Thanks for having Thanks. us. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what your company does. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, uh, I'm Victoria. And I'm Gloria. Our first names and last names rhyme. It's absurd. I know this yeah. sound about like me. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. People assume it's, uh, these are fake names, but no, it's on my license. Real names. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Victoria Fu. Gloria Lou. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. It's yeah, perfect. Okay. Do you guys have nicknames? Do you guys have nicknames for each oh, other? No. Not really. <laughs> chemist A, Chemist B. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, how we got started. Well, first, some backstory. We met uh, working for the same big beauty conglomerate. Yeah. Um, we Can we were, share? Can we share who that is? L'Oreal. L'Oreal. <laughs> that we share. Friends with Schmorio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, we were cubicle neighbors and yeah, just friends first. You'll see we share the same very like awful quirky humor and Sometimes that's not very of... well received. But... <laughs> <laughs> and that's like how, you know, we started a friendship and then through that timing just so happened that we ended up leaving the company at the same time. And neither of us really had a plan at the time. Mm, yeah. And I know like, well, since we're cubicle buddies, we complain to each other a lot. I mean, what were you guys doing at L'Oreal? Yeah. We're both skincare formulators. Which yeah. means what? So to, to oh, someone right. like me, <laughs> the to someone like me who knows nothing, what, is, what does that mean? What are you guys working on? We always say behind every product you see on the shelf, there is a chemist like us mm -hmm. in the little hole in the lab, just mixing everything together, okay. making sure it's stable, making sure marketing can at least legally make the claims that they want to make interesting and make sure okay. it's safe for everyone yeah. so they, and they also oversee quality so mm -hmm. it's not just about the formula in the bottle it's making sure it's happy in the packaging um, it can actually last its entire shelf life in stores and yeah holds up over time uh, and safety and efficacy as well. Fun story for Diego. Um, Victoria specializing in anti-aging actives, and yeah. I worked on. Why is uh, that a fun story for me? Well, <laughs> I'm getting to the fun part. Fun story for everyone in general. Diego feels so old. <laughs> <laughs> I think people don't realize how much stability issues just mm -hmm. something as plain as a serum or a lotion can be. Yeah. We've had many like explosions. There are mm -hmm. things that one goes from white to gray to brown to black uh, just because poop of brown. Poop brown. <laughs> we made liquid poo before. <laughs> And that's kind of a chemist's job to make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah. So when you guys were leaving, was one of the things that you didn't agree with some of the business practices or were you guys, what made you really want to say, I, I can't take this anymore? I mean, good question. I think we try to emphasize the chemist portion and it's mm -hmm. because when you think of a chemist, they're kind of like that gremlin in the basement that's like <laughs> toiling away producing <laughs> formulas. So, and we also realized that you know, it's frustrating because at the end of the day, you're just like with all the marketing noise out there, you're just kind of missing all the work behind the scenes. Mm. And 
knowing that and you know being a simple chemist where you're not able to like really be the master of the formulas a lot of these have already been kind of drafted up by marketing following trends um, right. looking at they're what's telling you they our need this topics. right exactly yeah, um, yeah, okay. so with that i think both of us yeah we're kind of feeling the same way it's like i probably could do more or i don't really know mm-hmm. how i feel about mm-hmm. my current position and yeah maybe ultimately i think i was trying to stray away from the industry get more into like actual like ingredients and molecules not just for skincare it could be for food industry anything like that and gloria i think i think i was just trying to leave the big company at the time i wasn't sure if i wanted to be a chemist in the long run but i knew i wanted more exposure l'oreal was so big as a chemist that that's what you do that's your role right you're kept in the hole i was trying to go to a much smaller company so even as a chemist you have more say in other departments mm-hmm. right so, yeah. yeah i'm kind of surprised that marketing dictated Everything. what you guys would formulate <laughs> and not the other way around like what's going to be good so for that you. makes sense to me <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah i mean that ultimately it's what sells and right. I'll, I'll be completely honest when we we had that feeling leaving yeah. but as we started doing our own products and chemist confessions, we realized the marketing aspect it's important. is important. Yeah. You know, it's not to, you know, say that, oh, what a waste of time and money, but you know, there is that, it needs that finesse to really bridge the message together. And we'll get into this, I'm sure more later, but we realize now that customers are more and more aware. They're a lot smarter than a lot of industries give them credit for. And so with that, it's been really helping us with both content and products so mm. yeah what was one of the things that so you guys just make the decision to want to create some content and yeah. what, what was the first thing that you wanted to either debunk or mm. just share mm. so i think <laughs> in the beginning just as industry insiders we always have friends and family come to us and ask us questions and we realize how lost people are mm. in this industry so in the beginning it was one to vent frustration a little bit and say hey guys like chemists exist and this is what we do and two i think our first series was actually on sunscreen because when we started content it was right around summertime so it was just very little things that maybe you don't think about like double check the expiration day why is broad spectrum really important and why do u.s sunscreen suck yeah so so on that topic on why u.s versus everywhere else Mm -hmm. i mean i've found i've had so many problems with my skin that I look for things that are not made in the U.S. because I wish the U.S. had more regulations. That's a great, great point. And mm-hmm. oftentimes, the sunscreens is the biggest, biggest category for mm-hmm. that simply because, yeah, the FDA is incredibly behind, you know. We actually just wrote a post on how um, the world, on not the U.S., can use a lot more filters than we can. Mm-hmm. And the last time this really important um, sunscreen, new age sunscreen filter was approved, <laughs> like the Pussycat Dolls was still releasing top hits. So yeah. like, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. It's been yeah. like 15, 20 Tell years. Tell people where they yeah. can find the... Uh the blog post you just mentioned is oh, from your website yeah. oh so, it's on instagram yeah <laughs> it's on our instagram and we should also add that you ask how we got that started we didn't really have a clue as to what we were doing sure um but you wanted I, to educate you wanted to inform right yeah. yeah we also didn't want to write really really lengthy blog essays because we knew that there was such a barrier with mm-hmm. explaining the science behind it and a lot of people are just like looking for quick answers right mm-hmm. so with that we we're like, okay, maybe Instagram is the better format for like short blurbs. Uh, we say short, but nowadays you'll see that. Our <laughs> <Yeah. still laughs> <an essay. laughs> but, but I think that's okay. Like I know when, when it comes to food products, even people are, they seem more willing to write a longer right. caption yeah. on Instagram yeah. to amazing. know like there's no gums in my almond milk or something. We realize our followers are super informed and they want that content, that level of detail. And there are times where we write something I'm like, damn, that's really long. I don't know if, they will read that and then someone will point out a typo I had in the middle of it. I was like, oh my God, you read the whole thing. Went that far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm so happy. <laughs> I, I love it. And I've seen some of your posts where, you know, you debunk like the ingredients list and go through it. And it's like, well, if your skincare has 45 things in the ingredients mm-hmm. list, I do want to know what all those things are. And, right. you know, I don't want anyone to skip it. I want to know every single thing and why yeah. it's there and if it's helpful or if it's not helpful or damaging. Is it, is it like food where it should just be four or five ingredients? Um, not necessarily. Yeah. But we okay. will say 45 ingredients. Which it's too much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There, it, there is purpose. A lot of times we'll get 
um, questions where they're like, oh, this looks like it's mainly water. This looks like there's only one actual beneficial ingredient, but what about all the other ones? But people forget that in order for it to hold up in quality, safety, um, make sure you're not growing any mold, like there's they're still important, you know, and they may sound slightly foreign, but it's not necessarily something to be afraid of. And Mm -hmm. there's always a trend of going chemical free. We really don't like that, (laughs) but going toxin free, chemical free. But Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you have to remember that even water is considered a chemical. So, you know, it's important to know that the dosage makes a poison. So Mm it ultimately comes down to that. And I would say the cutoff for a too long formula is sometimes you'll see packaging, you'll see the ingredient <laughs> list, and then runs over to the other side. Oh, yeah. That's usually when it's yeah. unnecessarily right. long. Yeah. 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 What else besides sunscreen did you guys first start your content your, on? Yeah. Uh-huh. Actually, uh, I should also add that. So I never had an Instagram before. Oh, this. yeah. Oh, wow. And Gloria only had an Instagram for her cat. For my cat. And so we were basing our expertise on running my an cat Instagram. Instagram. How many followers uh-huh. did your cat have? I will have, have you know that my cat has 4,000 followers. Wow. And it was a big day when Kevin's Confessions passed my cat Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> and Kevin's Chemist Confessions now has over 100,000 followers. Yeah, the cat's been left in the dust. Yeah. <laughs> That's <today>. funny. <laughs> yeah. It goes to show you the bigger industry. I guess people are really concerned with beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Or skincare, I guess, in general. It's just a giant, also a really giant social media industry, too. Yeah. Like from a social media aspect. Yeah, I just think of Kyrie, or sorry, what's her name? Kyrie. The Kardashian. Kylie. 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 Oh, and her skin. I just think about, so Kylie has this billboard on Sunset, like right over here. Oh. uh And she, it's pretty prominent and. It's li- I don't know how long they have the like, contract on it, but it it feels like forever. It's just mm. a revolving image of mostly her. Uh-huh. Uh, and then there's either like a lipstick or a balm oh, or wow. whatever the product of the of the month is. And I'm like, OK, is this is this a good product? How do we know? Mm. Uh, her I stuff no sells idea. out within like within minutes, minutes of right? yeah. it going live. Yeah. And so it's yeah. like maybe it's just the megaphone that works. I have no <laughs> idea. So as an audience. outsider, yeah. I have no idea. And we know we, that celebrities are, it's a great entry for them. There's you always know, some beautiful market. people, yeah. you know, they, yeah, I think there's, I think this year alone, Lady Gaga has her own eyeliner, like everyone has that product. So. And there was, I feel like they always feel like beauty is the low hanging fruit mm-hmm. yeah. and they just want to get a quick exposure on it. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like even, I think recently the thing that shocked me the most is, DeAndre Hopkins is now like <laughs> a face of a, you know a hippie like skincare line, yeah. um, and so even then that's it's just shocking how inviting skincare is now. Whereas mm. before it just felt like your mom's cream, like right. the Nivea you know. tin is yeah. your skincare, right. and you didn't yeah. have as many options as you do today. Yeah. I just love that as part of your mission to simplify and that we don't need these like insanely long regimens. I mean, right. we're all very busy and. For me, you know, I'm sort of intimidated. I'm not like really a girly girl. And I look at these, you know, like lengthy yep. routines and mm. I'm like, I can't follow that. There's no way. Mm. So to have like a few really good quality products that mm. work together that are easy to follow and easy to like implement, that to me is like much better than how pretty the packaging is. And that's actually one of the biggest things we preach on Instagram is it's nice if you're someone who's regimented, who want to follow a 10-step routine, but it boils down to consistency. Yeah. And we get it, right? It's like the window shopping effect. You see that pretty packaging. We, we are guilty of it too. But at the end of the day, you should know what your core essential products are. Mm-hmm. And using just, just using sunscreen every day will go a lot further than having a 10-step routine that you for, you maybe remember to use every other, other day, you know? Mm-hmm. And also, we ourselves are very lazy. <laughs> we would be considered incredibly lazy because you, know, you mean the both of you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, really, you know, we're always on the go. We have to travel, like, mm-hmm. you're exhausted. There's only so many things you want to put on your face by the end of the night that, like, it almost feels... I would feel like an imposter telling people to use 10 layers. Because sometimes we get people who ask us for, well, we get a lot of people who ask us for routine help, and sometimes they're so regimented, and mm. they, they'll give us a long history of what they use, and it's like 15 steps, and we're like, every night? <laughs> like, damn. That's something I try to do with, let's say, real estate development from the outside can look really complicated. Mm. Yeah. I try to boil it down using either metaphors or analogies to like these really simple steps. Yeah. And so when I think about skincare, 
when you guys are saying it, you don't need a 15 step regimen, yeah. what do people need? Is it a three to four step regimen? What would mm-hmm. you? Yeah. Good so question. we actually, going back to your original question about our content, we actually break down the entire industry into four major segments. Cause I feel like one of the biggest source of confusion is marketing always develop new product names, mm-hmm. right? You have essence, serum, ampules, Diego's giving oh, me a very blank look. And after a while we get questions. It's like, Oh, like, do I need an essence and a toner and then an ampule? But then from a chemist perspective, they may not be very different in composition. Mm -hmm. So the way we divvy up the industry is into just cleanse, moisturize, sun protect. And those are your three basics. Okay. Right. If you do nothing else, moisturize, sun protection. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then treatments is definitely the one that can target, you know, these long term skin concerns, wrinkles, pigmentation. But at the end of the day, if all you have time for is, you know, the basics, then we would just say the core three, right. you know, and then, yeah. What is a cleanser? What, what is like a good cleanser need to have in it? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely shouldn't pay a lot for it. Um, you shouldn't pay a lot for no, it. No. That's the problem in makeup. So I'm an outsider to Natalia's sure, skin mm-hmm, regimen, but sure. there are some things in upstairs that cost five dollars and there are some things that cost like 200 and yeah. i'm like i don't understand and it's very frustrating too because you know as someone who i just want to fix the problems and have like a long-term sure. sustainable solution going forward and you know i'll go to like i'll get facials done or like chemical peels or all these things and these people tell me okay you just need a few like really high quality products and that's it and i'm like cool and i'm willing to spend because i want to figure it out right Right. but i also want to know like specifically for my skin type you know which are going to be the most effective things if it's a four dollar cleanser i'm totally good with that too i just right there's just so much noise in the industry exactly yeah and that's why like you know we always tell people if you want to save somewhere cleanser is probably one of those things because it, it's simply for the function of cleaning. Do any big names make a good cleanser? Yeah, actually cleanser from a chemist perspective is not the easiest thing to formulate. Mm. And a lot of bigger companies have pretty good cleansing formulas. I want to say one thing that as a if you're trying to get more serious about skincare, something you should consider replacing is soap-based cleansers mm-hmm. because they're usually a little bit too stripping, especially if you have dry and sensitive skin. Right. And that actually can cause a lot of irritation in the long run. Not saying it's bad for all skin type because like soap's been around forever, but just saying in something that's worth upgrading. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. What's yeah, a good I range see. of dollars people should spend on a cleanser that you guys would say? Oh, Is it like anywhere between five and- 25? 25. Nothing, I well, I don't think, I've seen cleansers that cost like $120. Like, don't do that. It's not, like, <laughs> you have to still okay. mermaid it's just tears in my right? yeah. It's just marketing. Yeah, and yeah. There okay. also seems to be this trend of like custom skincare. Mm-hmm. Oh, what, how do you feel about that? I've seen a few of them. <laughs> I have so like, take this quiz and we'll like develop this specific thing for you. Yeah, so I would say to the the good side of it would be all of the prescription ones yeah. just because especially with covid right now you're not really able to see a derm so if you can get prescription tretinoin through curology apostrophe and you know, what is it, muesli there's like yeah. we think those are great okay. the ones that are you fill out a form and they customize for you and they charge you 200 bucks i will definitely say i am not in love with that idea simply because the formula itself has to be relatively rudimentary for them to customize those actives in. You're very limited to the actives you can use to kind of like make that sustainable business model. Let's right. just say that. And a lot of times like it comes down to the idea of customization is attractive. Mm-hmm. And I think many brands have their own take on it. But when you put it in practice, it's very... And this is part of the philosophy of how we develop our products too, is um, when you do those projects, of course, like you want people to give you a set of data points and you pump out a formula that matches that. But a lot of times you'll realize that with skin, it's hard to do that, right? Because self-perception is very different amongst different individuals. If someone fills out a survey that says, oh, my skin is dry and I'm in my early 30s versus someone that says, I'm 40 and my skin is is dry like are those two different from mm-hmm. a product perspective right and it's the just human condition really different messes enough to up. warrant their own right yeah. yeah 
And the suggestion, the customized, the customized concoction ends up not being very meaningful in a real sense. I always wonder when you fill those things out, do they just have two or three standards that they just tell you, yeah, this is made for you, but they really just have three standards, the oily, you know, combination and dry. Yeah, probably. probably. Yeah, Yeah. well, that's what I thought too. Yeah, Yeah. I look at it like like an algorithm. It's like you can't solve for every case, so you have to bucket each use case as best as possible, but there's inherent error. Right, and every formula needs to be tested if they're a responsible company will be tested for at least a few months for stability for shelf life for compatibility with the packaging too Mm -hmm. so it's just not plausible to have a hundred of those on deck ready to go to be customized so and i think the other big category where customization doesn't work is those with sensitive skin Mm -hmm. again how someone perceives their skin as sensitive they could be like oh but it's really delicate it doesn't necessarily mean that you have an allergy or you really are sensitive it's just you're trying to be as gentle as good to it as possible Mm -hmm. and so it's really hard to measure that and when you do i guess try to take such a conservative approach you end up missing out on good ingredients that really could help you and so that's why these quizzes they just don't really capture that. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I have another skincare related qu- yeah, industry yeah, question before we, I think, switch back over to entrepreneurship. <laughs> um, <laughs> bring Diego back in. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, companies like The Ordinary, you know, mm-hmm. and Des- Desium, right, mm-hmm. have popped up with these, they're basically yeah. stripping everything out that's mm-hmm. unnecessary. Right. And a lot of, there's been a lot of feedback, I feel like, from users that maybe they don't hold up as well compared to like the name brands of retinol and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about those kinds of brands? I, I, I think <laughs> I kind of like the mission and yeah. I think it resonates with your mission as it, well. Yeah, it depends on the formula. I think it's great that they're making these ingredient names more recognizable, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. just while we were still at L'Oreal, it's unthinkable to market with lactic acid or resveratrol because most consumers are like where's who you know and now like because of what they're doing people are more comfortable with these names so i think it's great but quality of their formulation can range far and wide in between so not everything's a winner why is that why do you think that is quality control the thing that i guess they essentially do is they sell ingredients um they don't actually sell treatments or moisturizers and so so there's a shelf life issue it's not necessarily that it's that i think they're not stable we would consider them side phases so it's Mm -hmm. solvent it's too simple so what victoria Mm -hmm. means uh we actually wrote a post on instagram recently too they have this product called uh a resveratrol and they have a three percent which is very high and there are only two ingredients in the formula it's just propane diol which is a solvent and the uh, and resveratrol but that means this formula is 97 propane diol which in most regular formulas it will be in it at five percent ten percent max so that level of solvent can actually be very irritating it's too simple right yeah and so it's good in that you know I think so it's directionally correct as I would say yes. what, they're, what they're trying to achieve <laughs> exactly. is directionally correct exactly. but the application of achieving that is far more difficult exactly the ordinary did a great job of showing that you don't have to pay a lot to get good skincare but the other side of that is when you do make it so simple um, you do open up to other problems like irritation the other issue we get a lot with questions about the ordinary is just sheer lack of education you know they they were the forefront of introducing all these ingredients but now users are like i don't know what to use but i feel like i can afford 10 different serums i gotta use them all right but then it's not how it works you know it's just your skin can only handle so much and you know we'll often hear from people about like yeah i see them take away six of the ordinary serums i know they're going to come back and return four of them yeah because they realize it's just too much and so i feel like you should yeah. have it like a television show where it's like a mary kondo type of <laughs> yeah i was just thinking you just, <laughs> you were to go through like, my literally we should <laughs> yeah. probably just go upstairs and then <laughs> We should open up all of Natalia's <laughs> goods to you. And I, I would just love to see what happens. I would just, I don't know. I think you could probably boil it down to you need like four of these 20 things. And if you don't know how to use niacinamide, don't, maybe don't use it. <laughs> yeah. I would love to take the same approach of, do, do you love this skincare? <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, well, great. sometimes. I don't know. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> That's true, because if you're having like a really good, let's say like makeup day, mm-hmm. but you've applied something that 
maybe you shouldn't be wearing. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some nostalgia associated with that product, I would imagine. (laughs) Right? Totally. And then you're just hooked forever. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. we mentioned cleansing. What was the second one? And then there was sunscreen. Moisturize. Sunscreen. Moisturize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just trying to break this down because I don't have any idea. Okay. When it comes to cleansing, is it cleansing twice a day, morning and night? Uh, you don't have to. No. Just once no. a day is once a day fine. Is if you can cover once a day, then you're golden. Um, Any time of the day, whether it's probably. nighttime. Night. Yeah, night, 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 night would be best because... Okay, good. I shower at night. That's when I cleanse. <laughs> yes. Think okay. about like daily grime, accumulation of sweat, all yeah. of that. It's best to at least Before cover you go to bed, like, probably. Yeah, before bed. Okay. Yeah. So, moisturizer is the tough one for me. And I then generally really when do you skin. moisturize? In the mornings? Uh, we come in the morning and night. Yeah. Okay. When I moisturize, the moisturizer I use has a SPF. It's 30 SPF. Okay. Also. So it's got a sunblock and a moisturizer. So it'll be just for day. Right. Is that good? Or should we not blend anything? Oh, no, no that's great, actually. Great. Okay. Um, Especially right. for those who are like <laughs> finicky Lazy. with sunscreen. Oh, yeah. um, Oily skin, yeah. I'm the same, gets really I oily. I hate wearing moisturizer. Right. Mm-hmm. Too. But it smells delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and important. It, it happens to have an SPF. Yeah. So no, I'm like, okay, great. I'm doing what I need to and do. And with SPF, we just want to say that our go to recommendation is you know what? Forget about that's a one category we'll say. Forget about the chemist recommendation. Forget about what anyone says. If you enjoy using it and you're willing to use it every day, like if it smells delicious, yeah. that's, that's it. And that's the biggest struggle with sunscreen is a lot of people don't have good sunscreen habits or they don't like it so they don't wear it every day yeah. so yeah okay. I've, i finally think i've found one that that works and yeah. i want to show you i want to get your opinion on it at some point <laughs> yeah, yeah of course you know, just yeah. to check <laughs> i use a so we actually had a company on the podcast called a system and they were making essentially products for men's skincare okay. and i have no idea if this is, works or not but basically it's you start your morning off with supplements they call mm-hmm. that number one okay. so it's every vitamin you've ever wanted Okay. Or needed a, allegedly again. Okay. I have no idea. I'm just yeah. believe the science. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. then yeah. number two is the uh, actually there's a cleanser also, which they okay. recommend twice a day, but I only do it at night when I shower. Mm-hmm. And then in the morning I put on the moisturizer with the SPF. Okay. And then at night they have a overnight cream, okay. which is basically a moisturizer. I yeah, yeah it is. And it I is. just put that on, and that's it. That's yeah. all. <laughs> so I feel like simple. I nailed it. Okay, yeah. they nailed it. Yeah, there you go. All so, but covers. the thing is, like, the problem is this. What do you call winning, right? So mm. if I start a business, yeah, I would imagine the revenue, the views, the users, the uh, adoption, okay. I can view as, like, this is working. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. When it comes to putting things on your fit, like, if I subscribe to a diet, I would mm-hmm. say, okay, is my body fat going down? Mm-hmm. What is my BMI? Is my weight going down? Mm-hmm. Do I feel good? Mm-hmm. There's clear indicators of success. Mm -hmm. In this world of putting things on my face, there isn't. Well, Well, that's because you're blessed with I know. For me, it's lack of sun damage, controlling my acne, (laughs) not having oily skin, oil control, (laughs) rosacea, like all these things that I would, those are measurements. But if I started a new program today, right, Mm -hmm. like a new diet, let's say, it would, it wouldn't, I would still have to maybe take two weeks, right, for things to really start to set in. Yes. Okay, yeah. of consistency. Yep, yes. skincare still needs time to work. I would say in your case, you will know if it works probably 10 years down the road. Wow. <laughs> because so that's of, a terrifying thought. Because of, no. you know, what, because because developing wrinkles, you know, mm-hmm. are you developing oh, sunspots? No. It's stuff like that that yeah. is the really what's going to This show. doesn't help, though, because that means I could be on the wrong path for 10 years. I know, the next day, if something isn't working. So that's such a good point that you brought that up, because when we first started, like Victoria mentioned, we are like, yeah, science, everyone should subscribe to it. And then when we do more, as we go down into this rabbit hole, we realize, like, okay, we understand understand why skincare is a little gets a little culty because yeah. it is a belief system right you have to trust it's in what religion. you're using it's a software yeah you <laughs> like, have to um, just believe that it works you, right? blindly for 10 years <laughs> right so i mean there is certain uh, areas of skincare where you see results faster mm-hmm. right we say you still have to be consistent but you can see say lessening spots you can notice uh, lessen your fine lines or um, just sunspots in four to 12 weeks that's usually how long a skincare clinical testing is mm-hmm. but in terms of age prevention especially if you have pretty good starting a, a pretty good starting point like you diego then that it gets a little religious <laughs> yeah. that you just have to believe that this is preventing aging yeah 
yeah. yeah. But you should do it either way. Yeah, well, no one's. Are you really gonna do half your face in name of science? Right. I actually might. He's the person that I would. Would. He would call <laughs> you all the trials on himself. All right. Call you we'll... back in 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> I won't. I, I, well, come, yeah. Come let us take measurements. We'll start you on the clinical. Right. Would it be night and day? Let's, 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 your face. let's yeah. pretend we did that. Let's pretend we subscribe to this mm-hmm. in 10 years' time. And I put nothing on one side mm-hmm. and the system that I mentioned to you about on the other side. So would you know? Like would yes. it be very yes. clear? You would. Yes. I mean there's a clear, very, like very clear. Very clear. There's like one very... side of you is dateable, the other side not dateable. <laughs> very clear. Cause... The other okay. side of leprosy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're it's a tone like, deaf joke. Look like hundred years from now, people will listen to this and say, "Oh, can you believe I told well, this?" I don't think it's really a thing now either. No, no, so. no. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, what? so there's a really no. famous study of a truck driver, mm-hmm. and he is driving on one side. So that means oh. in this, while he's driving, the sun only hits one side of his face, mm-hmm. and you can see very clearly the distinction of damage on one side versus the other. So the sun causes a tremendous amount of damage. The most damage. It is the biggest source of damage. Aside from aging. (laughs) I love the sun. It's great that we're in SoCal, right? I know. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm playing tennis later today. I I always wear sunscreen. Very rarely do I wear a hat because I don't want tan lines. But I might have to start doing stuff like that. (laughs) It's a great point. And I was going to just add on that the science can only try to bring logic mm-hmm. to all of this. Yeah. Um, it doesn't tell the whole picture and will right. never tell the whole picture for every single individual just because skin is so personal. It mm-hmm. involves your lifestyle, your stress, your age, you know, right. e- your genetics, everything. And so with that, like we always tell people, if it's working for you, you found something you like, it doesn't matter what we say. If you pay $150 and it works, like, great, you know, keep going. There's no reason for you to abandon something that works and try to start over because you heard some celebrity, you know, is using some miracle Radio treatment. If it sparks joy, do it. Yeah, if it sparks joy. <laughs> this I is love a television it. show, I'm telling you. I <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, would love to see it. If there was like a service, you know, if you guys offered a service that was like, okay, I'm like a weekly or bi Home consultation? Check- no, like a check in of like, okay, what's working, what's not, how mm-hmm. should we. You know, like assuming somebody is accountable and they are going by routine yeah. that you prescribe, you know, that would be like, and they can help you and be like a feedback loop. I think that would be so helpful because I feel like, you know, when you get these products or anything new in skincare or makeup and you try them, you're like left to your own devices. And, yeah. you know, if it doesn't work, you're like on your own searching for the next thing. Is yeah. diet a big part of this? Yeah. 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 Sugar yeah, is yeah. not great. Yeah, sugar's okay. not great all around. Avoid sugar. Oily foods. Right? Yeah. How about wine? The anti the, the antioxidants. <laughs> I think it's some great. red wine. I'm not hate on alcohol. You just you need enough of it to work. It to work. <laughs> just saying. That's what I tell myself. Yeah. yeah, that's what we tell ourselves too. So going going back, I mean, I just I'm I so admire you guys because you starting this company. Like, this is a big industry with, like, reg, you know, well, I'm not in America regulations, I guess, but mm-hmm. in most places, like, heavy regulation, heavy approval process, mm-hmm. long trials. I mean, were you guys intimidated when you start, started this, like, <laughs> on your own or after working for L'Oreal? I think it's, like, ignorance is bliss in the yeah. beginning. We're so yeah. cute. Like, look, we, we look at pictures <laughs> of us so when cute. we first started, and we're like, there's this joy skin was great. Yeah. <laughs> no stress no stress there's this, this, this youth yeah. <laughs> we do always say if you want great That's skin hilarious. don't start your own company i'm just saying yeah, <laughs> yeah i hear that okay. yeah. yeah i think as we did the content we were just doing content and yeah. then we kind of get gotten to a point where the content became so uh, it became a full-time job that we were like, okay, well, we either need to get a job or <laughs> we need to figure boys. out what to do with this. And so we're kind of blown away by people like actually enjoying the content. Mm-hmm. We really didn't think that people want to listen to like all the technical kind of jargon behind it. Um, oh, we want to know. <laughs> yeah. So then with that, we were like, okay, maybe we can try to capture that in these products. And I will tell you, being chemists, we did not want to put like more stuff Mm -hmm. out there it couldn't just be like another miracle serum you know and Mm -hmm. it really for us to make it gratifying was that it could actually solve a problem or knee gap that 
wasn't there. And I think that's kind of helped us、mm-hmm. kind of shape. That's cool. How far along、um, were you before you thought about making a product? We were、uh, doing the content for about a year almost.、Yeah. And then I imagine people were just saying, "Hey, make a product." Yeah. Yeah,、right? some. And I'll be honest, you know, when I think as chemists, we knew we. You always wished you could be the own, the right, one who、exactly. made your own product, right? right、yeah. And so we definitely would talk back and forth of like, what about、right. this? What will we do if we do it? <laughs> yeah. yeah.、Right. So what did you do? What was the first product you did? <laughs> so, so we started out with moisturizers. <laughs> moisturizer, yes. not a cleanser, a moisturizer. Okay. Yeah. Oh man, our cleanser thought, has a story. No, the cleanser is harder to formulate. Yeah. So. Well, moisturizer. Well, to to your <laughs> earlier question, it was a lot easier because of our chemist background、mm-hmm. that we know what will be faster to do. We know how to get、With、little l- less money. Yeah, less money. <laughs> we know all the testing we need to do right off the bat. We we probably could、uh, cut a good half a year from regular product development process just because we were in the know and、yeah. down to the、um, packaging type that will help preserve the product. All that was really helpful.、Um, we started with moisturizers because, to your point, cleansers and sunscreens are both really lengthy developing development time, and sunscreens are have、um, extra regulation hurdles to go through. So,、um, moisturizers. The way we structure the line is we kind of divvy out the components of a moisturizer from the、um, perspective of a chemist. What I mean is. Everything on the market is something moisturizing, something、yeah. that will make you dewy, right?、Mm-hmm. But most people don't even think about that there are different components to a moisturizer. There's the water-based ingredients、mm-hmm. that's just gonna grab onto water, and then there's the oils and waxes that's gonna smooth and then seal that moisture in.、Mm-hmm. This was actually a big source of confusion in our community, where people ask questions like, "Oh, what is I, our community?、Just、oh, our Instagram skincare the, the community. Yeah, yeah, okay, got the, it. yeah the, the Instagram community. community. Consumers. Okay, yeah. So people、mm-hmm. ask like, "Oh, I bought this、um, hyaluronic acid." Serum, why isn't it hydrating enough for me? And they don't realize that oh, it's lacking the oil and waxes to seal it in. It's an incomplete product type.、Oh, wow. Not that, not that it's not、like、a good spray, product. Right? The,、uh, like, the there's a like H- a dropper HCL or something. Oh, the the spray mist is also another thing. It's water based and but it doesn't、yeah. seal. Same. No,、nope, exactly. same thing. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Right.、Yeah. And I think the other thing was, you know, when you go to a drugstore. You are kind of at the whim of the brand, right? Right.、100%. They could tell you it's normal, it's combo, it's dry,、mm-hmm. but that's like in their metrics, right?、Yeah. But in comparison to other brands, their threshold、oh. really can be different. different. There's no,、yeah. there's no act. Nothing has been calibrated.、Wow. So instead of having people like kind of just blindly guess, guess and check,、right? yeah, and tr- go through that. Why not? Right, exactly. Why not just provide them these essential tools where you've isolated out these ingredients by function, and they can just add it in when skin gets more dry,、mm-hmm. or take it away when it gets more oily. You know, and with that. They will be like essentially the master of their moisturizing needs.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, and going back to the point of customization, and we kind of think about this line as personalization. We are not. We give you suggestions, but what we want is create products where the customer feels comfortable experimenting on their own. Because skin's always gonna change, right? No、yeah. one's gonna know what you're going through by a survey.、Mm-hmm. So if you if you get comfortable with the quality of a product and understand what it really does for your skin, then you should be the idea is you should be comfortable enough at Adjusting it to what you're going through.、Mm-hmm. So how do you do that? So in my head, as an entrepreneur, I'm always like, I just need to bucket. Like, if I can take skincare or food or、mm-hmm. whatever and bucket people into three groups, then I can create three products、right. to solve three problems. Right. And then I can create lines. Right. It's like vertical integration. Is that completely <laughs> the wrong way to think about skincare? So I'll. I think. And I get... won't get offended if it's true. <laughs> I, have, I honestly have no idea. No, no, no. So I think, and、um, Gloria can also add on to this. Is we. Really struggled、mm-hmm. in the beginning with、yeah. the moisturizer launch because、mm-hmm. it was so technical. Yeah. yeah, no one understood. Like, what do you mean I can do this? Like, and they still needed you to tell them exactly what to do. You know, and I, I get it. It was just, it's a very, very different way of thinking about a very, actually, not very glamorous product. You know, moisturizers. People think they're just like, well, that's okay. It's the thing I'm supposed to put on, but、right. it's not. The magical serum that's going to make me look like a million bucks, you know.、Mm-hmm. So why should I put that effort in, you know? And so that's the, why the snail oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah snail use it. <laughs> we get that question all the time. Is that a real thing? Yes, it's a real yes, thing. Real thing. Wait, 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 wait. It works. 
No, it's hydrating. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's a to real thing. A, I know, it makes but does me less it less oily than does it moisturizer? Oh, um, debunk, debunk. <laughs> it's so, okay. It's not gonna be anti-aging. Yeah, okay. and it's I'm a water using for that. <laughs> not using it for that. <laughs> yeah. You're not using it for that. No. No. What are you What are you solving for? It's It's very hydrating to me. I don't because I. My skin is like... Really I have the chemist in the room. This is amazing. <laughs> it feels good. Feels it's, good. it's a water grabber. So yeah, it's supposed to hydrate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you guys need to be nice or yeah, me. It's, it's, not, it's not a cure-all. <laughs> but you should YouTube how they how they extract the... How do they do that? Oh, well, yeah. Tell I, us. It's quite fun. Yeah. So There's I, a real snail? Yeah. It's yeah. Or a bunch snails. of snails. A so you put it in a blender. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. So it's, it's a Monsters, Inc. story. Right, so um, the old way is it, it sends a little electric current to it, so the snail the freaks snail. out and, just, and <laughs> releases mucin. But then they found out that if they um, put it in a very pleasurable sauna, it releases more mucin. Oh. So that it's like straight up monster. And it's a happier snail. Yeah, it's a happier yeah, snail. Being it's a more humane. Yeah, definitely more humane. What are we talking? About? <laughs> We're talking about snail saunas, okay? But get on board. You guys are saying that there's really no practical application to it, it sounds like. I feel like you're guiding us on the I know, you are very leading questions here. Yeah, Just the- let me have my snail oil, okay? So we would consider it like a It's like a B minus, it sounds like. It sounds like you're not <laughs> proud of this student. Everything. You're not really proud of this student, but he's not failing. She's not failing. So yeah, it's oh a God. C plus. It's I like, hope this ti- the title of this podcast is now going to be Chemist Confession says so snail <laughs> oil is a B minus ingredient. No, definitely not. <laughs> so we would say that a lot of Asian skincare is notorious for using these like very eye-catching exotic ingredients. And so for something like snail mucin, we would say that it's kind of like a moisture, a hydrator plus, right? You know, it's shown to have certain like other beneficial molecules, but at such low levels that it's kind of like a nice perk to what essentially is just a moisturizer. So you could just use a moisturizer and be just as fine. It sounds like what you're saying. It sounds like you want to Marie Kondo her cabinet. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds like. The problem is that there's so much information out there coming from all different directions that I don't want to just throw something out if it's like... Yeah. And yeah. you said it's working, right? I like it. So Once in a while, there you go. Yeah. Then in the winter, in the winter yeah. is nice. And moisturizer is, an, is one that you absolutely should base on how your skin's responding, mm-hmm. right? That's not something you need to wait three months to really know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. yeah. Okay. Especially if you have drier skin or even combo skin, mm-hmm. if you, if it makes a difference and your skin's on right track, you will know. Mm-hmm. So, so you guys had this suite of products, and then what was it like, like actually? bringing it to market and going through the... Yeah, so we mentioned that in the beginning, it was like the education piece was Mm -hmm. really hard. We were like, oh, it's better to have to let the customers like explore you know we created these little like experiments oh, and we box of, we call them box of goodies and yeah so it allows them to kind of trial and error you know and cool. allow them to mix and match get the idea of like really honing in on like what's working but that's unfortunately when you make it you almost open the world too quickly right yeah. and they don't quite understand you know the capabilities of these products and Mm -hmm. so i feel like it it really did take us almost a year to really hone in the story give lead by example you know talk about case scenarios Mm -hmm. to kind of help them realize like okay oily skin start here dry skin start here they still need like a starting point and the funny thing is like well, at the same time, we're still keeping up with the content because we don't want to lose that community that we built. And also, we do feel like there is a need for that kind of objective voice. So we also didn't, didn't use the platform to just like, all right, guys, it's all about us now and our products mm. are better than all the other bitches out there. You know? <laughs> yeah, totally. yeah. But, so I would have you totally swear, done it's not that going on ABC. <laughs> because a part of me is thinking you guys are kind of like the blockchain for... These, these, <laughs> these products where we're trying to arrive at the truth. It's almost like the media, right? If we had mm-hmm. blockchain and media, there would be an absolute truth. And we wouldn't get... <laughs> so we put it that way. Yeah. That's great. Thank I like you. that outside perspective. Probably for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> and to add on Victoria's point, we started going to a few trade shows to kind of get our okay. names out there. And then we realized, this is when we realized that, holy crap, we really appreciate marketing because we're in there... And when we're talking to people, we can see that moment. That they're like, oh, I get what you're about. This, we're sold this product awesome. But then we're starting to realize that it takes us 
five minutes to get there. It takes mm-hmm. us eight, ten minutes to dis- to describe the genius behind these props. But really, who gives a shit? You need to get there faster. I, I do. <laughs> um, thank you. So then you're <laughs> then saying with, with a nice packaging or some with the with better marketing or more streamlined communications. Yeah. More like people have these pain points and they do want to. Um, something that we are really proud of is these very hyper transparent ingredient lists, mm-hmm. but which people do want to know. But then we're forgetting, we're jumping too early. We're forgetting to explain to them why do they care about our transparent ingredient list? Mm-hmm. What is that one thing that's really going to strike a chord so they hear the rest of the five minute yeah. story behind the product? Because one of our top seller Aquafix is a hydrating water gel. And we, we really put a lot of thought into, well, every product, but that one has layers, right? It has high levels of soothers. It has hydrators of different molecular weights and sizes. But then if you don't hook them with something that they really care about, they're not going to find out everything else that we thought about. And Their put eyes the glaze over. Yeah. <laughs> We've had that many times. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I wonder why that happens, though. It's, it's a lot. You know, like it's... Think about it, you try to pack in all the science when they're used to only hearing moisturizer, right? Mm-hmm. So, and we've just unveiled level 40. You know, there's right. 40 different levels of understanding. I'm trying, it's yeah. called Mr. Reliable. Yes. Oh. Uh, I like the packaging. It's an all in one moisturizer. Yeah. Yes. I put it on my face. Sure. And in 10 years, <laughs> <laughs> we pour back magic wine. happens. <laughs> so, what am I looking for now? It's on my face. Am I, do I want to feel a certain way? Am I applying this the right way? I think for guys, generally, it's just I don't feel heavy or greasy. Do you feel love? Do you feel like your face has been caressed by angels? (laughs) (laughs) All he knows is that the lotion he uses now, his sister bought him at Lush like 10 years ago. Oh, that that, was an old one. He hasn't gone back. (laughs) So, uh, um, products expire? Yeah. Oh, no, I mean rebuying, rebuying. That's the same one. So, I guess this is the question. And so, then when it comes to marketing, the brands, what they've figured out is really how to apply or appeal to fear, right? Or appeal to... Yes, yes. Sorry. So, I have so, a lot of feels about that. <laughs> fear mongering. Yeah. Totally. But that happens in every industry yes. and it's the easiest way. And so as a oh, real estate absolutely. developer, if I tell you we're going to build this amazing thing and it's going to be so great for the community versus mm-hmm. if I tell you I'm going to give you 20 cents on the dollar every single year mm-hmm. and your stock, your 401k is giving you 10, one induces a ah, I got to get in. The yeah, other right. one induces that urgency. A, so cool, Diego. Yeah. yeah. These, these, are, these are really different. Yeah. Right. And so one almost feels unethical. Yes. And one feels ethical. Exactly. And so how do you guys, right? Because uh, you're, you're acknowledging it. You see it. You're at the trade right. show. You can tell it takes you eight minutes right. versus two seconds. So I think for me... I'm Man, that tr- hits it right on <laughs> I think, I'm sure Victoria has her feels about yeah. it too. So for me personally, it's to be cheesy. It's part of what got us here is believing in the message. That's the cheesy right. side of it. It's, it's hard for us to, who are we if we just jump into that because it works? Because, and then we're just contributing to the noise, right? Mm-hmm. So that's one side of it. And the other side of, side of it is that blind belief that this more honest messaging that we can get on board with is ultimately going to be more sustainable Mm -hmm. because it's such a crowded industry. Every Mm -hmm. Joe Schmo down the street wants their own skincare line, right? Mm -hmm. So the brand that's going to last versus the brand that sells you on a fear and then going to fizzle out. And we see so many of those brands that probably started around the same time we do already fizzled out. Oh, wow. Um, Okay. And we want to believe that it's because our messaging is more honest that's going to work in the long run mm-hmm. but then That's when it comes cool. to being at a trade show <laughs> there's a that. part of right it's, not so. <laughs> how, yeah, do, you, how it's, do you handle that because ultimately you need that to get into the market yeah and i think it's tough but i will say also it's probably because of our personalities mm-hmm. that we are so analytical and we just pride ourselves in just trying to stick to the science of it the logic behind it that to kind of get to that level is just like we would feel very ashamed you know (laughs) to have to reach that and it doesn't make very good business sense we understand that and we understand like in the marketing that's why we were really challenged in the beginning because we were trying to be have a very honest like content approach but then day i get to sleep at night i sleep well (laughs) because i know we're trying to do good you know so will you say ethics lead to good skin is that what you're saying sure in this, you yes, sleep at night because I, I you're following so. yes. your ethics. Yes. So therefore, part of your skin regimen is just being mm-hmm. a good person. Mm-hmm. 
Well, yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. We're now, selling this product, me, people. Let me just get that down. I'm starting a cold yeah. tub, taking that life. <laughs> totally taking it. That's the hard part. I mean, it is the hard part. That's also the, it's the scientist part. At the core of what we do and science itself, it, you'll see that, you know, even in the scientific community, not everyone agrees. You right. Know? And, totally. And Smoking, was, apparently there's enough studies out there to show that it won't cause anything but happiness. Uh, except <laughs> lung cancer. No, there, I mean, but yeah, but depending on who the study is funded by, right. it's mm-hmm. like, what are we talking also, about? Also, then right. by the time you're dead, who cares? You're happy. Right. <laughs> yeah, Seriously. exactly. So that's another thing uh, about our content is the social media loves black and white. They love to tout t- yes. right and wrong. <laughs> and they love anger. Yes. yes. And at the end yeah. of the day, like... It's like an outlet for a lot of people. <laughs> exactly. And so it's not skincare at all. You know, a lot of it has not, there's not enough funding to even do the testing to prove it. You know, there's a lot of lack of data all around. So with that, we try to just share, okay, this is the, there is a lack, but this is what is out there. That's what we know. And Mm -hmm. that's it. It's up to you, the reader, to decide, hey, okay, I think I'm on board with this or I'm not on board. More than capable of making that decision for yourself instead of us telling you this is really bad, you should cancel. Just you're just informing out of your routine. Yeah, letting exactly. people deduce yeah. from themselves. Yeah. But I think content wise, sometimes it's hard because we'll have people comments like, What are you saying? Is it good for me or not? Yeah. <laughs> right, like be more clear. Yeah. So, yeah. does this give me cancer? Yeah. 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 That's kind of how I look at it, or I try to get as close to that. Yeah. as possible yeah. what I'm learning here is that there's actually it's a bigger space than what I originally thought it's mm-hmm. not binary it's that there's a tremendous amount of people who can be right yeah. in this space and there's yes. also a function of does it feel good and that's yeah. a completely subjective thing so it's we, not science right. per se right we used to joke so part of our job at L'Oreal is formula aesthetics is very important mm-hmm. so there are times where when we're trained to like really feel down to nitty gritty it's stuff that <laughs> consumers don't necessarily think about but it makes a difference it's a psychology thing yeah. right so then this chemist sometimes I'm so stupid will sit there and be like one cream <laughs> is slightly creamier and we used to think it was so stupid yeah. when you're doing your own brand and you can dictate direction and formulation at least I start to appreciate that sense a little bit more. Like it's like the little things you want you want your consumer to feel from the smell to the texture to the break. There's a lot to it. Like outwardly, it's like if you say it, it seems kind of stupid, but it kind of matters. It's a whole experience. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. It, it definitely dictates whether people use it again and buy it again. So you have this these four products right now. Ah, oh. so that that's the moisturizer line. Then we have a cleanser that was also its own beast to formulate. And going back to our mission of getting the consumers get feel comfortable with mm. kind of taking control of a, your routine, these are they're multi-use. They come in these tubes with a precise application tip. What you can do is use it as a booster. You can mix it with your serum mousse and cream or a serum to um, to kind of get used to acids or you can use it as a wash off mask. So you, you don't disrupt your daily routine by adding the stuff. You can just um, add it as a once a week treatment to get the same effect. And if you get peels in offices, then this will help you upkeep with that result in between visits too. So yeah. yeah. I like the packaging. There's Do you get a full on it. peel, like a flaky peel with that one? You can, you and could. that would be a sign that it's a little too strong. So okay. that's why you know we kind of wanted this format so that you had the option of a gentle introduction yeah. to add to the moisture moisturizer and then you can just bump it up for the you know direct wash off mask we really wanted to make sure that people felt like they could no matter how complex or simple the routine was you had an easy way of incorporating it just really wanted to make it as inviting to all sorts of users as as much as possible. i love that so it's not going to throw off your entire right you know, everything exactly. you're doing so this is a I'm once a week it. thing you guys recommend okay. yeah as a wash off mask yeah yeah so and this is and we also try to be clever with the packaging and put all that in here i love that yeah. how would you describe it to people listening you got i guess the packaging itself is the ingredient list or the in the instruction card instruction yeah. card okay and we try to keep things fun 
cute bubble people high I like it. So it's time for real Aww. results. Yeah. <laughs> What's the bubbles? Oh, they're high fiving. Are these water? <laughs> are these water mo molecules? No, they're no. just cartoons. Just okay. <laughs> by the no, way, all of our so. art is hand drawn by Victoria. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that's incredible. My job is to like go, Victoria. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, <laughs> moral support. Be fine tune the design. <laughs> that's it's amazing. Very important. I like it. So yeah. as you guys think about scaling. I don't even know. So you guys obviously have a following. So is it a function of just getting influencers on your gram? Is it getting people you that align with the product? That is, is it doctors? Wait, COVID. Slash, this has, yeah. This has yeah how has that impacted you? Yeah. It's been good. It's been really good, actually. And I think... So COVID has been good? Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's okay to say. Those are just like <laughs> set traps. Is it, is it? That's okay to say. It's, okay to say. it's, it's like snail oil. oil. It's like snail oil. Yeah. Well, people are sitting at home and thinking about self-care. So I think most skincare companies are seeing a boost. I don't know. I think the education actually, I think people are really leaning into education because they're bored and said that they're like, oh, they maybe now I should get educated yeah. on everything, right? Yeah. right? And That's we've seen exactly. that. Everyone that we've had on the podcast, it's, they haven't been able to sell, so they've leaned into education, yeah. and they realize that's worked. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's yeah. exactly it. It's like they finally have time to read what we write. I guess yeah. so. <laughs> it's been, uh, you know, it's we've been really lucky during this period. We're mainly D to C, so that's also been relatively easier as far as growing man i have no clue i'm still yeah. i feel like we're, we're still, still waiting to see how all of this is going to just pan out and then kind how of much are these there. how much are the yeah, products that you guys have so the moisturizer line ranges from um, 29 to 39 dollars and these are 38 to 42. Oh, that's <laughs> average of 40. That sounds Great. reasonable to me. Is yeah, that it does. reasonable? It is very reasonable. Mm -hmm. Very reasonable. Yeah, yeah and we, we want to keep it that way. And for the moisturizer line, we are working on revamp too to try to make the value even better. But value is a hard place to be for a startup too. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I want to ask a question. So in terms of if you guys could put your marketing hat on for a second. Yeah. <laughs> but looking at it as a scientist, so put okay. on your marketing hat and say, these are the things, these are the myths that we completely debunk. These are the things that people definitely mm. get wrong about skincare. Uh, mm. To me, one feels like doing nothing is wrong, mm. right? Mm. And so do you get, what are some of the things that you could tell the listeners? Sounds like lack of sense. This is what you've been told, or this is what you're ignoring. Mm -hmm. This is the fix. This is what you should absolutely, at a minimum, do. So I think for for me, the biggest thing is like moisturizing is so much more important than what people realize. They mm. don't realize that if you just moisturize every day, you probably don't actually need to spend mm. all that money on treatments. You know, when your your skin is healthy and hydrated, that's good. You know, and but unfortunately, moisturizer has just kind of been simplified to this cream that no one really takes the time to invest in that mm -hmm. that idea and mm -hmm. just keep keeping you know skin as hydrated as it can be and happy because once you start dealing with dry skin and it's irritation, you're kind of on this vicious cycle to solve that. But they then kind of you get distracted because you're like, oh, I need to fix you know this the wrinkles and the pigmentation where you're like no you need to bring all dial it back yeah. come back to the moisturizer so that would be like the one thing that i think from the beginning why we were also really motivated to do the moisturizer line right even though it just really wasn't the most glamorous product mm -hmm. to start with yeah i love that i love that i feel like the mission kind of you know drove you guys to, yeah. really aligns. to go that line. it makes a lot yeah. of sense yeah. yeah is there one for you that you think of yeah for me it's probably more is not necessarily more in skincare mm -hmm. especially now i think in the beginning victoria and i spent a lot of time writing content on just the idea of hey concentration really matters a one percent uh, vitamin uh. c serum or uh or you don't know the percentage versus a 15 percent vitamin c serum there's a difference and you know that mm -hmm. but now that more brands are leaning to that level of transparency we see a lot of bogus transparent um, percentages out there or brands that push it to a dangerously 
high level、mm-hmm. and irritation doesn't mean it's working. Like especially for something like acids, we ourselves have high potency acid lines, right? Some light tingling is normal, but if you feel like your face shouldn't look medium rare at any point, <laughs> and I think with that's another thing with the ordinary that we find can be a little challenging is people get too layer happy, and that damage is not good. Yeah, so, yeah. I think. Are there companies that play into that? Are they like we're going to give you this? It's going to be a little irritant.、Yeah. And then you're gonna have to、Absolutely. buy my, proactive, my moisturizer. Thing off of it. Yeah, I mean, there. I think there's this notion, and honestly, it actually started from using retinoids. Retinoids for just long history help with acne and wrinkles, but everyone knew there's a side effect, and now you kind of have this issue where people almost expect that、mm-hmm. in、What's、order to、effect? guarantee、uh, peeling, redness, stinging. Okay.、Um, yeah. It's yeah, just because you you're scale it back. yeah, it's because your、okay. cell turnover cycle is just like kind of on steroids.、Mm-hmm. So when that happens, I, a lot of people who have acne or dealt with acne understand that, and so they're just like, oh, it's my retinoid, my tretinoin going to work. But now people are expecting that、mm-hmm. in order to get results, and that's really just、yeah. gone too that far. That sounds crazy. Yeah, I、yeah. think that it has to hurt. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, to work, exactly.、Right? The concentration thing has been a recent pet peeve of ours, just because、yeah. it's just so much more confusing now.、Yeah. Because now you're you, you're telling them to pay attention. To concentration, they barely might just get a hang of it, and now they're like, "I gotta go." Oh, higher, yeah, this higher is better, better, right? This is yeah, more, yeah. you know. So happening, that, happening that's、yet. that's a really good one. So, what's on the horizon for you guys? Tell everyone what you're working on now, <laughs> or what you might be releasing in December, <laughs> winter. <laughs> so, in we're working on a retinal. We are. We are. <laughs> nice. <laughs> good segue. When it doesn't、wow. hurt. When it doesn't hurt. Hopefully, that's <laughs>、yes. yes, great. Oh,、uh, we're in testing phase, and that should be ready for December. We're also trying. Trying to improve on our packaging all around, so hopefully it will be a big launch in December. Yeah, great、right uh, time for the holidays. Yeah. yeah, I think the goal is like we really want to make sure the formulas just keep getting better and better. You know, Gen two, Gen three,、yeah. instead of like another moisturizer、right. adding to the bunch.、Yeah. Um, so that's our goal for. Winter and then yeah, who knows?、Maybe. Our goal is also to keep the line really lean, so we、yeah. do want to complete it with like all four categories. But it's never to have like eighty five products. And as you can see from the names, we have like Aquafix, Baby Steps, Mister Reliable. <laughs> Naming things are terrible. It's it's, it's so hard. Yeah. How do you decide to name them? Oh, oh, name them? oh, it's usually on long drives, and Victoria has. Almost voted me off the island many times. <laughs> so Aquafix, almost we were thinking of Sploosh. <laughs> that wasn't great. That wasn't great.、Uh, Mr. Reliable was almost McCreamy. <laughs> that was also not、That's、good. And <laughs> <laughs> I can see how people、That's、might misinterpret、so、it. As you can tell, we are not marketers. Sploosh <laughs> and McCreamy. Yeah, so、um, um, it wasn't good. Was so you guys、hard. are just literally. Creating names. Yeah, yeah we sit there and we go back、appealing. and forth. Yeah, we go back and、okay. forth because we want to be memorable and kind of cutesy and just. But when people Google it, they won't Google Mister Reliable. But would they Google McCreamy? <laughs> Definitely not. I don't know. They For Aquafix, turn the safe search. I, I think that also if you, it sounds like the struggle too is like picking a category of things that kind of go with each other,、mm-hmm. right? right? Like along the same lines. Like to me, Bomb Voyage and、oh, Aquafix. I like I like that because it, it's like travel, you know. It's、right. like like quick things that are like super essential and、yeah. like you you definitely need them, and it kind of says what it is. I like that she helped us put logic to creative. <laughs> There is zero logic. That definitely was not. <laughs> so, do you have it in your plans to hire someone from the marketing side? <sighs> <laughs> so, okay, actually, before answering that, we should say that. Skincare naming, we、garbage. actually think it's garbage. Very rarely do people remember the actual yeah, name yeah. of the product. Hence, why we went to town on naming these because we were just like, at the end of the day, you're just gonna think of it as, oh, that acid treatment I use,、yeah. that blue、right. acid treatment, or like, oh, that work exactly.、Yeah. So that's why we got. Creative, and we just feel like ultimately it should be. We want to have fun with it. I mean, it, if I could offer a suggestion, and this is from somebody who's like, yeah,、mm, not, high snail oil. Well, <laughs> it doesn't like no. You know, I, I'm like just now figuring out what's working for me and stuff.、Yeah. So even if you were to just have chemist confessions number one, number two, number three,、mm. and it's like then you could say, okay, use. This one, this time of day, or one,、mm-hmm. two at night, and like three, four in the morning, or something like that, or or whether、mm. like I've got I've got 
got two products by cosmetics and one of them is called simply brilliant and the mm-hmm. other one is called clarity and mm-hmm. i've had to text my my derm be, and be like which is the if, if it just mm-hmm. said like morning or night and it was just the, the brand yeah. i would be like sorted and i'd mm-hmm. never have to be confused about it mm-hmm. so i've actually labeled them like morning and oh, night oh, because oh, that's yeah. what makes sense to me and i don't care like these names are like cutesy but it's like i want it to work and i want to know when to use it right. and like what the order is right mm. you know? My, my products are literally labeled one, two, three. Yeah. Literally. I know. Yeah. It's, it's simple. It's yeah. easy to follow. And I, when I go to the bathroom, because they look the same, so imagine two identical units, mm-hmm. and I'll just go, oh, this is two. Oh, I use this now. And then three is that night. <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> that to me makes, makes sense. And We're just providing no... some market data. Could totally be wrong. I have no idea. Ten years, you said. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have you back on in ten years. <laughs> we'll see <what> <laughs> We'll find out. Yeah. Well, tell everyone where they can find you, where they can support you, where they can get educated on all and things. And buy your products. And buy your products. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you can find us, our education content on our website, chemistconfessions.com. And Instagram is just chemist.confessions. Yeah. And that's our main channels. We are in a few esthetician offices. There's one here um, called Euroclear Skincare. Mm-hmm. By the way, if you ever get an appointment with her, her name's Angela. She's awesome. incredible. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Shout out to Angela. Yeah. We'll definitely take awesome. so, so, therapy. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. So yeah, we're in a few and also on Beautylish. It's an e-tailer. And we should have a YouTube channel soon. Very cool. At some point. We we're in the war. In the works. <laughs> with, you guys, with, with your YouTube channel, will you guys wear like lab coats? No. no. <laughs> Gym clothes. <laughs> okay. Everything's casual now. Yeah. That's true. What are clothing anymore? We, we did buy um, lab coats in the beginning. We're like, oh yeah, we can totally wear these for trade shows or whatever. I don't know where they are anymore. <laughs> yeah, it just I think derms have done it enough that yeah. we're just like, eh, at the end of the day, we're just your crazy chemist friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think you're the blockchain for skincare. <laughs> I love use it. That. I use that. You should use that. It'll yeah, resonate with a, a lot of really nerdy people yeah, that yeah. won't buy your pitch. products, but they're just like hiding well, in a well, closet. Because they understand it. No, these are the people that don't go out in the sun, and so they don't need skincare. <laughs> they don't skincare. need sunscreen whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. <laughs> They're just downstairs drinking soda <laughs> and eating Cheetos. Well, thank you guys for coming on the podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having us. I certainly learned a lot. This is so informative and yeah. so great. Yeah. <laughs>